welcome to today's video. I'm Carmen Free. I'm an employment relations practitioner, but I'm all about intentional and sustainable living. Today's video, as per the title of the video, is my second fermentation process of my kombucha making. If you are interested and you haven't already seen it, I did make a video about the first fermentation process of my kombucha making. I've linked that down in the description box below if you want to watch that one first. I'm not going to repeat anything on how to do the first fermentation process in this video. So if you don't know how to do it, watch my video or somebody else's video on how to do that first bit because this is the second bit. So what that essentially means is we're going to take that brewing kind of very sweet tea mixture that's been standing for a while, a little bit longer than I intended. I intended for like two to three weeks. It's been like four or five weeks, if not more. Let's hope I didn't make vinegar again, otherwise this is gonna be a bit of an awkward video. But essentially we're going to take that mixture and we're going to turn it into a very tasty, fizzy drink. What I'm sharing in today's video is my absolute favorite tasting kombucha. I have made it with different variations of fruits and so far this is my favorite. So I'm excited to share that with you. I kind of wing it and so far it has turned out all right and tasty and fizzy. So I have gotten that fizz that you would like on your second fermentation. If you do have your own favorite variations of fruits and flavorings and whatever you make your second fermentation with and you'd like to share that, comment down below what your favorite second fermentation blend mixture is. So let's go check if I made vinegar. Let's hope I did not. Okay, so in the four or five weeks that this has been standing in the cupboard, I'm now gonna test it to see whether I made kombucha or whether I made vinegar. So that's a little more on the vinegar side than I would have liked. But I think I'm just gonna bottle it anyway and hope for the best. Yeah, that's happening. So it's not like, it's not completely vinegar, but it, it does have that kind of like vinegar after taste, very strong taste. Well, let's bottle it and let's see.
I have already prepped my fruit. So that is frozen raspberries that have been standing out a while to defrost. It's way too much, like I'm not gonna use all of that. And this is the pomegranate that I earlier today de-seeded. I think those are seeds, de-pipped. I don't know, got, got the fruity bits out of the fruit. So I have mashed my mixture quite a lot. I'm sure I could do it more, but I don't I don't mind like drinking bits of pomegranate. And if it does bother me, then I can just sieve that out. As you can see, I just kind of wing the amounts and now I'm going to bottle it. To bottle the kombucha, these I got secondhand from somebody in my complex. I really like ones that have, oh, that have this kind of top that can really seal quite nicely without a lot of effort from my side. These are Grolsch beer bottles. And then a very similar one, this is one that I purchased that I also use and they work really well. But again, this is my favorite type of top to use because it seals very nicely. bottled one two three four five six seven seven bottles of kombucha mostly because i ran out of fruit not because i ran out of kombucha liquid i still have more than enough kombucha liquid i'm just gonna i actually already made a new batch of tea that i'm gonna pour in here straight away and then put it in the cupboard and leave that to ferment again i'm not going to leave it for four to five weeks so that if this doesn't work out if i do taste this in a week two weeks from now and it tastes bad, then try again. <laughs> kombucha is a fun hobby for me and I really like to drink it and I try to make the process of making it as stress-free as possible. So the sometimes when I do make vinegar, then I do. And other times when I make really awesome tasting kombucha, then I'm happy about that. But I'm going to put this away now, not in the fridge. It stands outside to turn into fizz. I'll check it seven days from now to see if it's fizzed yet. If it hasn't, I'll just close it up. I'll just check one. Then I leave it for another couple of days because it's winter. If it was summer, I would check it a little bit sooner, but I'm going to leave it for seven days. And then as soon as it has fizzed, then I put it into the fridge. Yeah, so that's it. This is just gonna stand around in my house right now, not in direct sunlight, but not in the fridge. And we just wait for it to fizz. The fruit that I added here, so I don't add any additional sugars, as you saw, I add the fruit, which is sugar enough in my opinion. If it doesn't fizz, then that means one, I probably left my kombucha too long, 
or two, I didn't add enough fruit with enough sugar or I didn't leave the actual thing long enough. But those would be, or it didn't seal as nicely. So when, when it doesn't, when I've used other types of bottles, sometimes I don't get a fizz, but with these bottles, every single time I've made it, I did get a fizz. So it's going to be really embarrassing that if for this batch, it doesn't fizz. So I will see you in seven days from now when I check whether it's fizzed or not. All right, we are back. Today is the the 26th of June when we bottled the kombucha. I think I said that I was gonna check it seven days after it had been bottled. I'm embarrassed to report back that today is 12 days afterwards. So let's see how it's gonna go. My kombucha making is very experimental and it like fits in with my life, but a lot of the time it works out just fine. And sometimes I have checked it bottled like two weeks afterwards and nothing has happened. Or I check it like a week later and it basically squirted fruit juice all over my ceiling. So today when I open it, because I'm not really sure where it's at, I'm just going to do it in a way that feels safe in case it does like whoosh, the whole ceiling. Uh, but maybe it does nothing. So let's go check that out. So this is where it has been standing since we bottled it 12 days ago. Um, if you could get off the counter, <laughs> that would be amazing. Nina, get off, please. Hey, get off. Okay, let's get off. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so as you saw, that was really messy. Uh, <laughs> I did leave it a little bit long, but that does show how you can make kombucha with just fruit, and that will give you enough of a fizz to mess all over your kitchen. So next time I really should stick to, to checking it maybe even earlier than seven days. Um, I think at seven days, it's like done, done. For the actual taste of this kombucha, the raspberry flavor comes through quite a lot, even the pomegranate, but mostly raspberry. And it is really nice, the flavor, but, and I think I did say this when I bottled it, I did leave the kombucha a little bit long, so it does have that kind of acidic aftertaste that isn't amazing. So that isn't to do with the second ferment, that's the problem with the first ferment. And I'm really okay with batches like this, it's just a reminder of how to do it differently and not to leave my kombucha so long. So I have another batch brewing in the cupboard, the first fermentation. I'm gonna go buy some fruit today so that in a few days from now I can bottle that and make sure that it didn't turn acidic. I'm still going to drink this, like it really is drinkable. I wouldn't drink it if it was too far gone, if it was tasting like a vinegar. I would just be okay with it going down the drain or <laughs> onto my plants or something. Like I wouldn't consume it if it had really gone like way too far but in terms of taste it does give it a little bit more of a yeah acidic taste that's as best that i can describe it but as you can see there's like a lot of fizz and the fizz part turned out really well and that concludes the second fermentation process of the kombucha so it didn't work out perfectly but i'm okay with that 
it's drinkable and learnt something for the next one and that's pretty much how it goes do the first fermentation do the second fermentation and I just continue on like that and sometimes I experiment with different fruits but mostly raspberry and pomegranate is my favorite one to do okay so if you like this video please go ahead and like it and if you like my content please remember to subscribe to my channel so I'll see you next time for whatever food or drink I'm going to be making that we use as part of our sustainable lifestyle or healthy lifestyle. I think like I said in my first kombucha video, I don't drink kombucha necessarily for the health benefits of it. However, I definitely think if I was to pick drinking this kombucha versus like a really processed carbonated drink, this is the better option for me and I enjoy drinking it. See you next time.